call to order. This is the 10th regular meeting of the 2011-2012 Common Council. And as is customary, our city clerk, Sue Richards, will give us the quote of the evening. Thank you, Mayor. All of life is a journey. Which paths we take, what we look back on, and what we look forward to is up to us. We determine our destination, what kind of road we will take to get there, and how happy we are when we get there. Thank you, Sue. Roll call, please. Belt? Here. Warren? Here. Carlson? Here. Decker? Common? Here. Hammond? Here. Heidemann? Excused. Hoth? Here. Kittleson? Here. Matichek? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Raisler? Here. Sampson? Here. Van Akron? Here. Vanderweel? Here. And Versi? Here. 15 present. We have a quorum now. If we can all please join Alderman Hammon in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Joel. Looking for approval of the minutes of the prior Common Council meeting, President Rinfleisch. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that we approve the previous minutes. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. There is no discussion. All in favor of approving the minutes state aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes are approved. Public forum, Sue. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> I just would like to take a few minutes of everybody's time. Um, you, all your aldermen have a document in front of you that I did this afternoon, if you want to follow along. Basically, it's talking about the public forum and the procedures behind it. <clears throat> There have been a few issues raised over the weekend regarding how the public forum is handled by the city clerk's office. This process is directed by council resolutions that have been passed over the years. October of 1999, there was a resolution passed to increase forum from 15 minutes to 25, so as to give five persons five minutes each to speak. September of 2004, again, 25 minutes established so that anyone wishing to speak on a subject relevant to city government would be given five minutes to speak. December of 2006, a resolution passed giving priority to city residents and city taxpayers to speak at the public forum during a council meeting. The process is very simple. We operate totally on a first come, first serve basis. The public may request a spot on the public forum at any time for any council meeting. The public forum for tonight's meeting was full by about a week ago today. We already have somebody signed up for public forum for the September 6th council meeting. This afternoon at approximately 3.45 p.m., the first person on our, our list for public forum called in sick. We then called the next person that requested a spot a week ago to speak, and she was told that the public forum was full at that time. I found myself in front of a camera with uh, TMJ4 News on Saturday evening at my home, defending the process that the council has directed me to follow due to past Alderman Gillette's questioning that he was denied his right to speak this evening at the public forum. The Sheboygan Press has also questioned me today regarding excluding Mr. Gillette from the public forum. The clerk's office operates on the highest level of integrity. We always have, we always will. This is disturbing that the integrity of my staff and of myself are in question over something that the council has set policy over several years. On May 16th of this year, the council passed a resolution adopting general rules of order procedure and conduct for committees, councils, and the public. In that document, it clearly states the procedure for public forum up to five persons for up to five minutes. I have put all the resolutions and the procedure books on your desks, and I have many extra copies that could be had by the public. I hope this puts to rest the doubt and the questions regarding my office and how we administer, it, administer the council's direction. And on that note, I'd like to call the first person. Her name would be Susan Hunley. Would Susan Hunley be here? Susan Hunley? Is there anyone in the hallway? No. And the next person would be Joanne Scribner. Joanne, if you could come up to the mic, please. Joanne, can I have your full name and your home address? 
Joanne Marie Scribner, 3 Seneca Trail. All right, ma'am, you will have five minutes. I have seen Mayor Bob Ryan doing some very good things in public, like I had mentioned last two weeks ago, like frying brats, hot dogs, hamburgers at the Little Red Schoolhouse for the neighborhood cleanup day there for the Gateway neighborhood. I saw him at the uh, Blue Harbor spaceport for the Rockets for Students Day. He was proclaiming Sheboygan spaceport Rockets for Students Day. He was joking around with astronaut Michael J. Foreman. I saw him taking a ride with Chad Peleshek. I was out there in the front of City Hall one day and they were taking a ride somewhere to some development, some future development. Again, I, he explained to me one day in his office how a TIF works. He answered some of my questions about how city government works. I've seen him walking or riding in Memorial Day, Fourth of July, and Broad Day parades. I saw him this past Memorial Day at the Hmong dedication, honoring a, one of the Hmong leaders that had died recently. I saw him at the Sheboygan County Memorial Airport, along with his wife Mary, for a victory celebration in November 2010 for people like Ron Johnson, Scott Walker, Joe Leibham, Steve Costell, Mike Ensley, Dan Lemihew, and Todd Preeby. Last but not least, Mayor Bob Ryan had the intestinal fortitude to be in the public eye to face possible ridicule from his enemies and foes and to sumo wrestle against the likes of Chief Herman, Chief Domogelski, although that didn't happen, it got too hot and humid. Those things are hot when there's inflatable suits on a 95 degree and what about 95% I think heat index. So he's done some fabulous things. I mean, that'd be tough. I don't know if I could be out there in the community after all of the accusations leveled against me. That takes guts to do that. Malfeasance in government. So I went and checked my Webster's Deluxe Color Edition New World Dictionary of the American Language, second college edition copyrighted from 1970, 72, 84, etc. Published by Schuster and Simon of New York, New York. Malfeasance is wrongdoing or misconduct, especially by a public official. Commission of an act that is positively unlawful. Distinguished from misfeasance or nonfeasance. Of course, then I had to check out what misfeasance means. Um, that means, um, well, first of all, let's go with nonfeasance, failure to do what duty requires to be done, distinguished from malfeasance and misfeasance. I'm not sure that when he was out and about, he was failing to do what requires to be done. As mayor, he's always done, as far as I'm concerned, what's required to be done. He certainly is promoting business here in Sheboygan, development, apartments, things like that. Oh, here's misfeasance, wrongdoing, specifically the doing of a lawful act in an unlawful or improper manner, so that there is an infringement on the rights of another or others, distinguished from malfeasance and nonfeasance. Do you have that all straight now? Um, camera phones, are they not an invasion of people's privacy, like I said again last two weeks ago? As far as misconduct in government, remember the 14 Democrat senators that were hit out in Illinois in February and March for three weeks, I believe it was, not doing their jobs. They didn't want to vote. We paid them to be in Madison. They were not there. That's misconduct in government, clearly. Remember Charlie Rangel, all the ethics violations that he had? Clearly misconduct in government. government. Remember, remember Anthony Weiner, sexting. Clearly, misconduct in government. How about Rahm Emanuel somehow becoming the mayor of Chicago without even fulfilling the one-year residency requirement to live in Chicago before being able to be allowed on the ballot, but yet he's the mayor. 
How does that work? Oh, and don't forget Governor Raleigh Blagojevich of Illinois. What, he tried to, what, sell Senator Obama's Senate seat for to the highest bidder? Of course, he's in, I think, behind bars now. Excuse me, Joanne. Do you need your extra minute? I do. And, and, and who can forget the President of the United States, Bill Clinton, and Monica? Who can forget that? And what happened? Clearly, misconduct in government. Did he get voted back for four, year, four more years? Yes. Not sure how that happened, but... <coughs> Mayor Bob Ryan is accused of behaving badly in public. He certainly does need to act more appropriately in public. In other words, he needs to stay out of bars and taverns. So let's say that Mayor Ryan would take a one month or three month leave of absence to go to a facility for alcohol to totally abstain. I would expect then that all of you older people, all the persons and all the citizens clamoring, loudly complaining would also abstain totally abstain from alcohol for the one month, the three months, whatever it is. Excuse me, Joanne. Your minute is up. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Joanne. Next. Uh, next is Dimple Adams. Dimple, can I have your full name and your address, please? My name is Dimple Adams, and my address is 1424 Virginia Avenue, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. And you will have five minutes, ma'am. Thank you, Sue. And thank you, Mayor Ryan and Steve McQueen and all the persons for allowing me to speak tonight. I haven't spoke here in quite some time. <clears throat> However, I am very disturbed about what's going on in our city, and I have nothing but the greatest respect for all of you who are willing to serve. It's not easy to put yourself out there and say, you know, I'm going to be in the public eye. Now, I um, have um, spoken here many, many times in the past. I have been accused of a lot of things in the past. But one thing that I have always done is put my name out there. If I had something to say, nobody had to decide where it was coming from. It came from me. Now, everybody is talking about Bob Ryan as an embarrassment to the city. It is true that I am not happy about Bob Ryan having a lapse in his alcohol sobriety. If any of you have ever known an alcoholic or had an alcoholic beloved one in your life, you will know what it means. But I'm not embarrassed by that. My brother, who recently passed away in September of 2010, was an alcoholic. He had years of sobriety, and then he had lapses. I was never once, once ever, embarrassed because he had a relapse to this horrible disease. And I think that we could make this a learning tool rather than the show that it has become. I cannot believe that every Monday, every other Monday, here we are with all these cameras. I cannot believe that headline after headline after headline has hit the Sheboygan Press because our mayor got drunk at a bar on a weekend at Elkhart Lake. It just amazes me. Now, in my opinion, I received a letter last year in April of 2010 that called me nasty names and told me that they couldn't wait for me to die and that they were praying that it would happen soon. Do you believe that that person signed their name to that letter? Of course not. Now where are the people 
that have anonymously reported to the press about the misdeeds of our mayor. Where are the people that sent the pictures to the press? Where are they? Where is the person that two years ago sent the YouTube on the web? Those are the people that are embarrassing the city. Not, not Mayor Ryan and not you. You've got a big decision to make and I think you need to make it very, very carefully. It's going to cost a lot of money to do what you were talking about last Wednesday night. And you know, but for the grace of God, there we all go. We don't know who's going to be an alcoholic and who's not. We've all had things that we said we were going to do. We've all said we were going to lose weight. We've all said we were going to stay on a diet. We all said we weren't going to get hooked on prescription drugs. You know, but they don't keep us from doing our job. If every alcoholic in the city quit their job or had to leave their job because they had a lapse, I guarantee you there would be more job openings than you would know how to fill. Now we have this newspaper that puts this out. This is just last week's news. There's four of them here where the front page is consumed with the story. I, you know, it amazes me. But on Friday night, they go out to the bars to take pictures of people drinking. Where did that get to be a problem in Sheboygan? When did that ever become a problem in Sheboygan? One of the first jobs I had here after I moved here in 1976 was at the Kohler Company. And one of my supervisors was a man named Steve Heimke. Now some of you may remember who he was. But at one time, he was the chief of police of Sheboygan. And he told me that during Prohibition, that the train came from Milwaukee Excuse me, Jeff, and people you, got off of it. Would you like your extra minute? Just one extra. Okay. So that they could go out in Sheboygan. Sheboygan never shut down. This is Sheboygan. We have a, we have a tavern in every neighborhood. We all go to the taverns to watch the Packer games. Not all of us, but some of us do. I remember racing home from church many times and then going to the local bar to watch the Packers and act crazy. I'm not embarrassed by the mayor. I'm embarrassed by what we're allowing the story to do to our city. And we need to get on to all of the things that you guys have accomplished. And it's a long list of what you and the mayor have done. And you need to get back to business so that we can get rid of all these cameras. Thank you very much for allowing me to speak tonight. Thank you, Dibble. Thank you, Dibble. <coughs> Next. Um, Michael Thomas. Is Michael here? Michael Thomas? Michael, can I have your full name and your home address, uh, Michael Edward Thomas, 1105 North 6th Street. 1105? Correct. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Um, I'm not here to defend the behavior of the mayor. Um, I mean, I like Mayor Ryan. He's a nice guy and all, but that's not my uh, purpose of being here tonight. My concern, really, is the road that you're taking in terms of uh, trying to uh, get him out of office is going to be an expensive venture for the city. This is no time for us to be throwing money away. It, these are really tough economic times. I talk to people all the time who are struggling to keep their homes because they can't afford them. And some people are right on the edge. And to see money thrown away uh, is really frustrating in this kind of time. So I would ask you to really consider the cost of what you want to do. But more importantly, I think, is really the process. In this country, we have an election process. You were elected. In this process, people have died to defend. Personally, I think it's the people's choice if they want Mayor Ryan out. A recall election would be appropriate. We would know the cost of that. This could have an unlimited cost. So I'm concerned about the cost and defending the right of an election. You can't just leave that to a handful of people. It's not that I don't trust you folks. 
it's, it's really my decision, the taxpayer's decision, not yours. So I would hope you'd really consider that by taking this route as opposed to a recall, you're circumventing the election process. That concerns me a great deal as a citizen. <coughs> Excuse me. The other issue is that mess. We've got more cameras in here. There's no room for the taxpaying citizens in this room because of all the cameras. It's a media frenzy and you're feeding it every day. So rule number one in media management is make it brief and get it over with, not drag it on. So I would suggest that if I were in your shoes, I would certainly go for a recall option as opposed to the option <coughs> that you want to take. Expensive, circumvents our right to elect, and it feeds the media frenzy, which I think is ridiculous and embarrassing. So I would ask that you really seriously consider what you're doing and not just kind of take this lightly or uh, feed into what's happening, but really consider the process, the election process, what people have died to defend. You really shouldn't take that away. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Michael. Next. Last on our list is um, Milt Storm. Is Milt here? Can I have your full name and home address, please? Yeah, it's Milton Roland Storm, and I live at uh, 1736 Marvin Court. All right, and you will have five minutes, sir. Well, the previous uh, speaker sold part of my speech. Thank you, Mayor Ryan and Council Representatives of this great city of Sheboygan. Where to begin? Approximately 20 years ago, I had the privilege of meeting one of the sweetest ladies at U.S. Bank and now is employed at Community Bank. She is Mary Ryan, wife of Mayor Bob Ryan. Mary Ryan is a dear friend of mine, so I have also accepted Bob also as my friend. Mary's love is not puffed up. Mary's love does not vaunt itself. Her love can't even read my writing. Her love cures all ills, and her love heals and conquers all wounds. Now I'd like to read a letter to the editor about a mayor by Mark Leiter, who called me on Sunday. Mayor continues to embarrass Sheboygan. Sheboygan Mayor Juan Perez continues to be an utter embarrassment to the community, and unfortunately his Notoriety is now beyond statewide. The supposed joint city county law enforcement and data dispatch system, which the Sheboygan Press did a great job of detailing in a recent news story, is simply the most recent of so many double speak and self denial debacles. Of course, the, to the mayor, everyone else is to blame for his fiascos. By any measure, He's nearly always pitiful wrong on key issue and the mass media loves it at the community's expense. Please, would someone with intelligence, leadership, and class step up to the Sheboygan, step up to be Sheboygan's mayor and rekindle our once proud reputation? That's Mark Leiter. He was a county planner for the county, if I am no correctly. No, I'm not running for mayor. Now let's go to the cost of things that are happening here. I have a thing, it says, costly cases. Cities' political wranglings are consuming a lot of law enforcement time and taxpayers' money. An unpresented number of investigations spawned by police department disagreement political disagreements in the city of Sheboygan over the last two years have yielded no criminal charges but has cost the taxpayers thousands of dollars and wasted the time of the law enforcement officials. Sheboygan County District Attorney Joe DiCecco will soon issue his fourth city politics po political related ruling on less than a year and the Sheboygan Police Department has conducted five such investigations, two of which were referred to the 
Joe DiCecco. Every time I meet Joe DiCecco, the Democrat in a piggly wiggly, he says, oh, here comes trouble. Police and district attorney investigations of city politics related complaints. I'm only give you the titles. Bonnet accused of stealing parade files. False. He was not a good. Hart alleges angry rude officer. False again. Berg alleges threats by Perez. True and half true. Schuster implies bribery investigated for defamation. False. In fact, even Joe DeCecker called her loose lips. Bonet accused of improperly taking job. Again, false. The mayor, Perez, accused him. Groups allege hiring misconduct by Graf Perez. I'm sorry, I'm spitting into the microphone. Half true. Ratke alleges rude dispatchers. Again, false. Recordings of two phone calls showed dispatchers have been polite but unable to help Radke, and police ruled the complaint unfounded. The next day, Radke wrote a letter of apology in which he stated he had incorrectly perceived what he was getting around about. The report recommended he charged with f filing a false police report, but no charge was filed. filed. He was my older person. Well, let's move real fast forward here. Oh yes, uh, this is a dandy. Another waste of taxpayers' money. How many of you remember getting one of these? This is a citizen budget survey, and it was by Perez and uh, my good friend, uh, Dr. Jack Westfall. And Excuse it says there, Mayor Perez thanks the volunteers of- Excuse, Excuse me, Milt, oh. would you like your extra minute? Yes. Come up, sorry. Please continue. Okay, go ahead. Well, okay, I'll just say here that uh, Dr. Westfall was a DWOI because uh, Tim Irish didn't see the investigation, they let him off Scott Fee. That's only because he's a Democrat. I'm sorry. Now for the conclusion of what this council is asking, I may read my statements with the help of my identical twin brother if I can find it. After reading the numerous press articles demeaning and requesting the mayor to resign along with the council money to awesome, I feel a saner response is warranted. Relying upon my intelligence and common sense, I can draw only one conclusion. What this council is asking is tantamount to asking for a mammogram checkup of the glands of a ferocious bull. Anyone familiar with caring for bulls might understand the analogy. I lived on a farm with bulls. Pardon me, but what I'm hearing in public square sounds more like a lot of bull to me. Save the taxpayers' money for more useful and drop your case against Mayor. Mayor Ryan has been the best mayor that we've ever had in the city of Sheboygan. Excuse me, Milt. Oh. I'm sorry to cut you off. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Milt. You. I've been too nervous anyway. <laughs> You did fine. Thank you, Milton. I don't know about your experience with bulls, but I do know you have a twin brother, how much I know. Okay, uh, that is all for public forum. On to the mayor's announcements. Tonight we will have none. Go straight through the to the consent agenda. President Rinfleisch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that on the consent agenda, documents 10-1 to 10-22. Correct. That all uh, report of officers be accepted and placed on file, and that uh, all reports committees be accepted and adopted. Second. Okay. Consent agenda 10-1 through 10-22. Under discussion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We're just asking that 10-20 uh, be pulled and voted on separately. 10-20 be pulled for a separate vote. Thank you, Alderman Raisler. Alderman Hammond, did you have anything on the consent agenda? Yes, it was be the division um, of the question Alderman when Hammond? it comes to item 10. Uh, sorry. Sorry. The division of the question when it comes to item 10-20 on licenses 2805 and 4644. Okay. Presenting me a conflict of interest. We we will go ahead and pull those. Pull 10-20, and you also were talking 10-20. Yes. Okay. We'll pull 10-20 for a separate vote and separate discussion. So we will be doing 10-1 uh, through 10-19 and 10-21 and 22 on the consent agenda. Is there any discussion on those items? 
There is no discussion. Roll call, please. Excuse me. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Haas? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manachek? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. And Versi? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Okay, on 1020, uh, under discussion, uh, my suggestion if there is conflicts of interest that uh, those individuals abstain in order to ex expedite the process unless somebody would like to discuss uh, something in particular on those. Under discussion, under number 1020, there is no discussion. Roll call, please. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Abstain. Hammond? Aye. Koss? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichak? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. And Belt? Aye. 14 ayes, 1 abstention. Motion carries. Okay, moving on. Uh, reports of officers 2. 1023 by the city clerk submitting a communication from firefighters local 483 notifying the finance committee of their intent to pay the patient's responsibility portion of battalion chief Wildman's ambulance bill when he was transferred by the fire department ambulance from a Milwaukee hospital to a hospice care facility in Sheboygan County. Uh, city clerk, uh, President Rinfleisch, would you like to take this? I move that we... Um, ex uh, file the uh, document. Second. I have, have a motion to accept and file. Correct? Under discussion. Under uh, discussion. Um, this was discussed in the Finance Committee uh, when uh, the original request to waive the um, payment, the billing to uh, former Battalion Chief uh, Bill Wildman's family uh, came up. Uh, it was his last wish to be transported in his ambulance facility back to hospice care, is my understanding. Um, but the Sheboygan Professional Firefighters Local 483 stepped up and uh, will pay that the remainder of the bill on behalf of Bill Wildman's family, and I thank them for that. Uh, it's a fantastic gesture, and I think it's one the city can appreciate. Thank you, President Rinfleisch. So we have a motion to accept and file. Any further discussion? There is no further discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 1024 by the development manager related to the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce's decision to decline leasing strip of land <coughs> adjacent to the chamber offices between the right-of-way line of South A Street and the west property line of the chamber property. Development, how about uh, Alderman Hammond? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move the report of officer be accepted and placed on file. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and place on file. Any discussion? There is no discussion. All in favor state aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> 1025 and 1026 lie over till September 6th. 1027 through 1044 to be referred. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I would like, at this time, I'd like to pull forward several documents. I would like to pull forward document number 1031, 32, and 33, and I would like to make a motion to file those documents. Second. Okay, we have a motion to pull forward 1031, 32, and 33. Is anybody opposed to those documents being pulled forward? All in favor of pulling forward, state aye. 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 Opposed? Documents are pulled forward. Alderman Boren has made a motion to file these documents. Alderman Hammond seconded under discussion on filing of documents. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, for the people watching at home, these documents, 1031, 32, and 33, were the complaints that were uh, submitted by the citizens Jackie DuPont, Asher Heimerman, and Marlene Reindel. And after the city attorney looked at these complaints, uh, found that they were not properly notarized and were then were not complaints that we could consider. 
so that's the reason uh, rather than sending them to the committee of the whole again I think we can just file these tonight thank you thank you Alderman Boren any further discussion no call on this sir no there is no further discussion all in favor of filing state aye aye, aye. aye. opposed documents are filed Alderman Boren once again Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I also would like to pull forward documents number 1034 and 1035, and I would like to hold those two documents for document number 1059. Second. Okay, um, Alderman Bourne, if I may suggest uh, with the media here, is it possible that we, if you're pulling documents forward and holding, that we pull forward uh, document number 1047? along with 1059 in those documents and hear those now? That's fine, Mayor. It was an oversight on my, on my part. We can pull that forward. Would you like to pull those and, forward? And can you make that motion, and, please? And 1059. You want to pull forward 1059 also? Yes, 1047, 1059 in the two documents that you stated, which were 1034 and 1035. Okay. Do we have a second on that? We have a motion on a sec and a second on pulling those documents forward under discussion on pulling the documents forward. There is no discussion. All those in favor of pulling those documents forward state aye. 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 Opposed? Documents are pulled forward. Um, you need to do the RC first. Okay, we will begin with the RC, which is document number 1047, correct, sir? 1059. 1059. 1059 is a document by the Committee of the Whole who met and discussed preliminary consideration of complaints for removal of the mayor filed to date with the city clerk procedure in the event of formal <coughs> removal process and funding and hiring of special counsel and recommends to the common council to proceed with the formal removal process to have the appropriate leadership interview and hire up to two attorneys and to draft a resolution for a transfer from the unreserved fund balance to counsel slash legal services with no cap on the amount with the caveat that outside counsel notifies the common council when legal fees are at forty thousand dollars under discussion um, or actually we need a motion first of all Alderman Bourne would you like to make that motion thank you Mayor Ryan I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted second Okay, we have a motion and a second to accept and adopt this document under discussion. Alderman Hammond. Uh, this current uh, report of the committee, as we're looking at it, um, is this ongoing process is unfolding in front of us here in our city. And uh, I've started, uh, I personally have looked into some of this. I've made a lot of phone calls. I've received a lot of phone calls. And what we are finding right now in our city is, is uh, we've got a situation of what's buyer's remorse, if you will. Uh, we elected a mayor, um, and a lot of people right now are unhappy. Uh, what we're looking at doing with this report from the committee by moving forward with this is taking 16 people to make a decision that has consequences I don't think any of us are, are prepared to deal with. There are 30,000 registered voters in this city, roughly. And there's a dollar amount that's attached to what we're discussing here that the phone calls that I'm receiving are <coughs> overwhelming. The, 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 the statements haven't changed. We're talking about spending a large dollar amount that we don't have on this, and I'm being told, no, overwhelmingly, no, don't do it, do not spend that money. Uh, we're, we're walking down a road that is, is, is dangerous. The slope is slippery. You know, I, I don't want to beat on a dead horse on things that we've talked about, but the conversations that I've had over the last couple of days, I, I can't, with a clear conscience, vote to recommend that we go any further with this. This, is, this uh, puts us in a situation that we're going to have to deal with the reper repercussions for a lot longer than just uh, a one and done hit. This has got the potential to be as frightening as it gets. And I personally, I personally on this one, cannot see going forward without a cap uh, on, on this dollar amount, carte blanche, to go forward and allow this to occur. 
Uh, the democratic process on this one, if, if the people decide they would like the mayor removed, is a recall. It, it puts the onus then back on the voting public, on 30,000 people as opposed to 16 people getting a handful of phone calls from a handful of people with inside of our city. Uh, myself, taking a lot of phone calls, uh, some from the same people several times over, and have tried to pretend to be different people while calling me from the same phone number. In the world of caller ID, I thought that was kind of foolish. This is, this is not something I think we can go forward with. If, we want, if, if the mayor needs to go, I think this is something that we've got to let 30,000 people decide, not a handful of people that are calling us and emailing us. Overwhelmingly, the response that I'm getting over and over again is saying, do not spend this money. And at this point in time, that's the way I'm going to vote on this. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Under further discussion, President Rinfleisch, you are the first in. Thank you. Um, we've had some sad days on this council. Um, we've had some stressful days, um, days that none of us have asked for. Um, first sad day was the, the day that, uh, based upon the actions of the mayor, um, beginning to drag the city through this media circus uh, and embarrassing many of the constituents that have called me, uh, the council asked the mayor to 14 to 2 to resign. Uh, the council was forced to deal with the situation and did not ask to deal with the situation. Another sad day was when the mayor refused and continued to drag the city through this media circus. Another sad day was last week when the Committee of the Whole received verified complaints with claims of lying and, and claims of embarrassing situations in Elkhart Lake. We received this from members of the public. An ad requested us to investigate and asked us to investigate according to the state statutes, which do exist, have not been used, uh, but do exist. It's another sad day when the Committee of the Whole recommended to, to this council today um, to pursue the investigation, to do what was being asked of us, to do what we were elected to do, represent our constituents, to do our duty, it's historic. No one takes it lightly here. Um, it's the beginning of what I hope is a short process, but could be a long one. I understand that. Uh, but our duty is to begin that process of removal hearing, as according to the state statutes and as according to a citizen's complaint. These days are all sad because the council had to react to the actions taken by the mayor, Bob Ryan. The saddest day of all was last Thursday when I heard that the mayor threatens, not threaten the council, but threaten the citizens of Sheboygan with charging them up to or beyond a ridiculous sum of $100,000. A threat that was made on city letterhead, which the taxpayers own nonetheless. In my mind, it was a threat to the very citizens that he claims to love and represent. In reality, we are now being asked as a council and as citizens because of these threats to condone the mayor's actions, to accept his behavior, to somehow stop being embarrassed because it would now be too expensive to do the right thing. In reality, the threat tells me that we are being asked to put a price on our standards, our morals, our ethics, and most importantly of all, put a price on our pride as a community. Are we to be cowed by these outrageous threats of, of costs? Are we to be cowed into allowing further embarrassing actions for the next one and a half or so years? Because if we don't take action now, if something else happens, how can we do so later? Now, I'm sure others here uh, have told me, and I'm sure they will say themselves, that the costs facing us are not as high as the mayor stated in, uh, on Thursday. Even more reason to move forward. We've talked about repercussions. I fear repercussions if we do not act. I fear that we'll be facing the situation again. And I fear that at that point in time, uh, because we're close to re-election, that we will not act at that point in time. Now is the time. 
For those that voted to recommend moving forward last Wednesday with the uh, hearing, I ask what, if anything, has changed since Wednesday? Personally, I say nothing. Do not cave into the empty threats, despite the high dollar amount. I request that this body do what our constituents are saying to us, are asking us to do. Vote to move this process forward. And then furthermore, to hold up your head high, proud to be doing the right thing for your constituents and for your city. Thank you. Thank you, President Rinfleisch. If I didn't know any better, I'd say you took your comments of threats straight out of the Sheboygan Press, who had a headline, Mayor Threatens Council or Threatens City. What I did was sent out a press release stating that the actions that this council may take this evening are unproven. There is no precedent in the history of the state of taking an action such as this. It's not a threat. That's a fact. And there's a big difference between the two. Facts are what this should be about. Facts. What are the facts? Who are the accusers? I don't know. Because you know what? They're all unidentified people. People who wish not to be identified. Anonymous people. What are the facts? So we're going to have an investigation to figure out what are the facts. But we have to look at if this situation is, egreg is as egregious as is reported by some of the media, if every one of those things were true, every one of them, which they're not, but if they were, and if people came forward, real people, live people, would that in itself be a reason to determine that there is malfeasance in office. Malfeasance in office. That's the key. There has never been a public official in this state removed from office for actions in their private life. Never. That is the facts. That is the truth. That is what my press release stated. There were no threats involved. Threats are perceived in people's minds. What I stated was fact. Facts. So if you get the facts, start your process, hire your legal counsel, gather the facts. Gather the facts of all the accusations out there in the media. If every one of those things were true, which they're not, and you'll find that out. Does that constitute malfeasance in office? <coughs> if the citizenry of this city thinks that I'm doing a poor job as mayor, thinks that my private life grossly overwhelms the job that I do in this office, by all means, Anybody on this council that wants to take me out of office, start your recall. Get your signatures. Run against me. That's called the democratic process. I have a job to do in this city. I've been doing it. There's not one person in this council chambers that will say that the job that I have done as mayor of this city I've done poorly at. Nobody will. 
My private life is not perfect. I've stated that from the start. But my private life, my children, for the sake of your children, if I hear that one more time, my children are the business of myself and my wife. My family is our business. It's not yours. The well-being of my children is my responsibility, not yours. I bet there's not a person in this council chamber can even tell me the name of my children. This whole thing stinks. If you want to take me out of office, by all means, start your recall. If you want to go down this path, it's not a threat, it's a fact, it's never been done. There has never been a public official removed from office in this state for anything but malfeasance in office. I'm here to do a job, I will continue to do that job. You should know by now, I never quit, ever. It's the way I was raised, it's the way I am. I have a job to do. I intend to do it. If you decide to move forward on this, we'll deal with facts. But ask yourself if everything out there is true. Does it constitute reason to remove me from office or is it simply dirt? that we all have in our own private lives. Alderman Bourne, Alderman Versi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, in regards to a couple of the Alderman Hammond's uh, comments, we must live in really different districts because I didn't get, I got complete opposite of those phone calls. Um, and also to the over, grossly overstated dollar amount on where we're going, everything happens once. Something has to happen first. Somewhere in the United States, everything has to happen one time to set precedents. Yep, this is gonna be the first. Um, it's grossly overstated that can go well over $100,000. Numerous reasons, it was brought to my attention that uh, on top of, and Steve can help um, add, add into this, that once our hearing is done, our initial cost to that is gonna be, you know, we don't know what that's gonna be yet, could potentially be less than even a recall election. After that process, if we go forward with this and it's found that, you know, we remove the mayor and he appeals it, now he's going in a court of law, which all of those attorney's fees, we could potentially all get be reimbursed if the, re the repeal or appeal process is denied and everything else. So we're not on the hook 100% for the big dollar amount that's out there all through the press. Um, it could potentially be less than a recall election. And the speedy process, the speedy hearing that state statutes say we're supposed to have, like I said, could potentially be less than those those recall elections would cost us as having a special election period. And then as far as also your constituents, we're doing what we were elected to do. Everything doesn't go back as referendum. Now, everything doesn't all go back to the constituents. We are doing the democratic process. We're doing our jobs as elected officials. So that's where us doing this as an elected body, listening to our constituents. Like I said, you live in a different district than I do, obviously, that I didn't get those same phone calls but I got the complete opposite. Um, and as far as, no one wants to spend money. No one wants to. We didn't create this. We didn't create the dollar amount, the fictitious dollar amount that we could potentially go and get. Well, if you, anyone knows the exact dollar amount, besides a recall election, and that was brought up by Sue, the dollar amount, sure, that's great. It could be less. It's not going to be more because it's going to be a speedy process and all you need is due cause. And on top of malfeasance, you also have misrepresentation of office and every, every other order that goes along with what we're doing. And as far as facts go, that's what the process is, that when you hire an attorney, you subpoena people. You get the facts. That's when the facts will come. And that's when, unfortunately, it may be another sad day, is when more facts come out that weren't already published. That's the only scary part on what we're going through. So, I mean, as far as money goes, don't let... Um, big dollars flash you in the face and say, this is what we're doing. This is what's gonna hit you. You guys are gonna be using all this money out of your reserve fund. We could potentially use less. 
and you have to remember that process, once you go into a court of law, it comes back. And we could potentially get all of our attorney's fees and court fees in return. So, thank you. Next we have Alderman Matichek. Thank you. I hear a lot of... Uh, Alderman Matichek. Sorry. I hear a lot of could, maybe, 100%, no, a uh, lot of questionable statements, but never 100% sure positive thing. This is unprecedented. We don't know where it could go. We don't know how far, uh, where. And then we hear about representing the constituents. Who here has actually gone out to the doors and asked, knocked on random doors? Who here has actually gone out and tried to bother seeing where the people actually feel on this? I have gone door to door. And I, don't have time to hit every door, but I have hit very different areas of the city, and I, I, I feel very lucky to represent the district that I do have. We have some of the most uh, diverse people in the city. Um, that the, uh, the opinions do range quite a bit, but overall I'm hearing do not spend one cent on pursuing this. Let the voters do their job. Uh, have faith in, in, in the, the way we have done the business for, for how long? It's not up to the 16 some people to decide the, the fate of the city um, based on a few emails that they receive, a few calls that they have received, and not actually gone out and done their own duty as aldermen to go out and search for the answers of, of the public's feelings rather than going off of a few vocal opinions. Um, oh, I, I do have one question, though. Uh, the other thing that we keep hearing about is malfeasance. Uh, if we could get a legal definition of malfeasance. Fortunately, Alderman Matichek asked me this question uh, earlier today, so I was able to... Uh, I made a copy of the page out of Black's Law Dictionary of the definition of malfeasance. If uh, that's what you want to hear. Uh, it's this is not statutory. This is just a, sort of a legal dictionary definition. Um, first, I pulled out my Black's Law dictionary that goes back quite a while ago. So I pulled out my assistance. It's a little newer, but it's the same definition. So these things don't change that much over time. Uh, malfeasance, uh, according to Black's Law Dictionary, 5th edition, uh, <clears throat> evil doing, ill conduct, the commission of some act which is positively unlawful, the doing of an act which is wholly wrongful and unlawful, the doing of an act which person ought not to do at all, or the unjust performance of some act which the party had no right or which he had contracted not to do comprehensive term including any wrongful conduct that affects, interrupts, or interferes with the performance of official duties, and then it cites a case from Washington State. Uh, malfeasance is a wrongful act which the actor has no legal right to do, or any wrongful conduct which affects, interrupts, or interferes with performance of official duty, or an act for which there is no authority or warrant of law, or which a person ought not to do at all, or the unjust performance of some act which party performing it has no right or has contracted not to do. And that's the site from a West Virginia court case. And it con concludes, it differs from misfeasance and nonfeasance, similar to what uh, Ms. Scribner was talking about. That's, me, that's the Black's Law Dictionary definition of malfeasance. And uh, don't ask me to summarize that because okay, okay. Alderman Matichek, did you want to continue or sure please um, so it, it basically it's a very vague description of malfeasance and, and the charges up against the mayor is very vague so here we're de dealing with two very un very vague topics that, that and going into unprecedented action. So the likelihood of this going on further and further uh, and being a, a, a drain on the city finances is, is very possible with such vague topics that we're, that we're looking at. And again, when I went door to door, I didn't go with the agenda. I didn't uh, ask. I simply stated who I was and asked if they had an opinion on the mayor. And I s told them that I did not want to uh, state any more of that because I did not want 
to persuade anyone's opinions or thoughts, and most of them very freely opened up and said that they, uh, they had some personal uh, beliefs about the mayor, but then they said that the city should not be taking any, uh, any of the taxpayer money to pursue removal. Mm -hmm. If the voters want them out, the voters would vote him out, and that is the way it should be. Thank you, Alderman Matichek. Alderman Hammond, you're next. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just as a, a, a light little something here, I draw to myself sound some notes, and I, the word fear was used over and over again, and fear is a very powerful emotion. And emotions do lead to reactions, not actions. And, and that they are not the same. When you, when you react, you're not thinking about what you're doing. It's, it's ingrained in you. It's a flight or fight response. You're moving forward. If you let your emotions override you, and right now, fear leads, uh, God, I'm going to quote Star Wars. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. We've gone from fear to anger. Where do we go from there? Uh, the law does give us the opportunity to do this. It's stated in the statutes. Just because you can do something does not mean you should. I can put my hand on a glowing hot oven door. Doesn't mean I should do it. The last thing I want to see is us to put our hand on that door and wind up with a really bad burn. If we remove the emotions and quite potentially some preset political agendas from this and look at this again, we're, we're, we're using potential. I, I'm hearing the word potential over and over again. Potential to go one way, potential to go the other way. The potential that does exist, regardless of which way you look at it, is, is frightening. You're right, nothing's ever been done until it's been done for the very first time. Are we willing to take the chance to do that for the very first time and have this blow up in our face? I, I, I do have to question it over and over again. And Scott, I'm not going to argue with, with what the people that you're talking to. The, what I'm hearing doesn't change except the fact that they don't want us to spend the money on it. I'm still talking to people who are upset that they don't want to have me spend the money on it. And I, I want to be clear on that one as well. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Alderman Boren. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> First of all, I want to just say a couple of things about the process. Uh, Quasi-judicial hearing is really kind of a simple process in that uh, you hire an attorney, we hire an attorney, we hire another attorney to be the representative of the council. Uh, we call witnesses, we can subpoena witnesses, you can question them, we can question them. It's a, it's a day thing. It, it's nothing that's being invented. Quasi-judicial hearings are held every week throughout the state of Wisconsin. The other thing, Mayor, I want to uh, bring your attention to is I believe you stated numerous times that you are the mayor 24-7, 365. And uh, yes, you do have a personal life, but on the other hand, you don't have a personal life, according to what you said, if you're mayor 24-7, 365. And uh, we are aware of several situations when you were out of town on city business on the city's dime. A trip up to Minnesota with a, uh, uh, with a couple of department heads, uh, a trip up to Mole Lake last summer with an alderman, and as recently as a governor's conference out in uh, Niagara Falls with a city department head. Those are on the city's dime. And uh, you know, I don't want to uh, air any more dirty laundry than we have to, and I certainly don't want to embarrass cur current department heads or past department heads if we have to subpoena them. So just remember what you said before, you're Mayor 24-7, 365. And if you have a personal life, I guess you'll have to lock yourself up in your house and you can drink your brains out. But when you're out, you're, you're, as you said, you're Mayor 365, 24-7. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. I never recall using the phrase 365, 24-7. Um, I don't think I've ever used that phrase in my life, but I appreciate that. We all have pasts. We all can dig up dirt on each other. We can turn this into a mud-slinging fest. If that's the route the council wants to go, I don't want to go that route. Ninety-nine percent of my stuff is already out there. Several aldermen have seen to that. Several of them have already seen to that. One thing I am is brutally honest with myself and with you. 
I didn't have to admit two years ago I had issues with alcohol. I didn't have to admit last year I was a full-blown alcoholic. I did it. You know why? Because it's true. Because it's true. I work every day of my life on it. Every day. And I've said this in the past. For me, to slip up on my program is not a proud thing. It's not a proud thing. To say I can sit in my house and suck my brains out or whatever, that's not the plan, Alderman Boren. I've not touched a drop of alcohol in 22 days. I don't plan on touching a drop of alcohol for 22 years. I have offered to this council in closed session, which I can talk about because I offered it, that if I ever touch a drop of alcohol again, I put it in writing that I will resign on the spot, no questions asked. And truthfully, I've got a wife right now that will probably tell you if I do because she deserves that. I've also offered that a certain alderman can monitor what I've done, that I stick with what I say I'm going to do. I'm not making any excuses. I am who I am. I'm proud of myself most of the time. Sometimes I'm not. Not unlike anybody else. Since the so-called incident in Elkhart Lake, which by the way several aldermen knew got, were getting play-by-play -play accounts of my actions out there, in real time. Aldermen that are so concerned about the city and the embarrassment to the city that they knew exactly where I was and when I was there the entire time. They all had my phone number. They could have called me and said, Mayor, you're making a fool out of yourself in the city. Why don't you get your butt home? But instead, they just decided to get their information fed to them all weekend long. That's concern for the city. But it's not their fault, it's mine because I was the guy out there. I was the guy out there. Concern for the city, embarrassment to the city. That's all my fault. And that's true. Since <clears throat> 22 days ago, I have taken every step to be sober for the rest of my life. I've joined an intensive outpatient program, which is three days a week, off hours, even though I guess I don't have off hours because I'm 24-7, 365. I think that's it. Um, three days a week. I have a group I meet with another day of the week, which I've been meeting with for probably a year and a half now group of professionals in the same boat that I am. I also have a sponsor in the AA program, which I've never had before in my life. Somebody to hold me accountable personally for what I do. That is what I'm doing. I have no intentions of sitting at home and drinking myself silly or whatever. I have a job to do in this city. I've had aldermen say, well, if you just go away for a month, we'll do a deal and we won't go forward. I've been sober 22 days while on the job. I've never been not sober on the job. That's the whole thing. Anybody else here not had a drink in 22 days? <laughs> Two people. I do not intend to ever drink again. And here's why. The first time I quit drinking, I did it to appease my wife, who I love so much, but I didn't do it for me. The second time I did it, 
to appease this council or that council and keep my job. But I didn't do it for me. This time I'm doing it because I want it. And there's a big difference. I want it. I don't need it. Heck, I, can, I, could, I could resign this position tomorrow, go back into the private sector and function fully and probably not get YouTubed every time I'm out having a drink. But I want it. And my family wants it. I'm telling this council that the offer is still on the table. If I have a drink while I'm in office, which most of you think I can't do that, well, if you want my job or you want somebody else in this position, go ahead and accept my offer. I have work to do. I will put it in writing. Now, some people say uh, it can't be legal binding because of statute, state statute uh, in public office. No, it won't be legal binding. However, if it's in writing, obviously it will be posted all over the state to say the least. And if I was to have a setback, um, I would fully expect the citizens to be on the front steps of City Hall with torches and pitchforks. question we have to ask ourselves, are we going to keep the media circus live? Are we going to move forward? I've apologized for what I've done. I'm not going to grovel any longer. It's my responsibility. It's my fault and nobody else's. Nobody else's. But you have to ask yourself, so a quasi-judicial hearing is nothing. It's nothing when we're going to have multiple witnesses and not only does the council get to call witnesses, I get to call my own witnesses. There's going to be an attorney, a prosecutor, and my attorney, which in my opinion, if the council is going to go forward with these actions, I would request that my attorney be funded also. I think it's only fair. It's not the route to go because the end result, I, be, I believe, will be the same. We'll go through the motions. If we want to start digging up more dirt, we can do it. That's not what we're here for. That's not what we're here for. I will put in writing, if I am ever to have a drink again, I will resign this office immediately. I will put in writing that I will allow one person on the council of my choice, because frankly there's some people I wouldn't trust with the information, to monitor that I am doing what I need to do. But like I said, I'm not doing it for you. <coughs> I'm doing it for me, because I want it and my family deserves it. I will continue to do the job that I have done in the past without the embarrassing interruptions that I've also caused. And if somebody wants this position, somebody wants to sit at this podium, Go ahead and run against me. I have a job to do. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. Throughout this whole process, I've been uh, pretty quiet, mainly because I, I've been on the fence. And I, I can say the same thing about the uh, residents that have contacted me. It's about 50-50. And I can say I've, I've probably only received about 20 or 30 emails or phone calls or just face-to-face uh, -face contact. Um, there is no doubt that the mayor has embarrassed the city multiple times. I mean, there's no questioning that. But it's already been alluded to tonight that uh, it is my belief in that this process is just going to 
drag the city through the mud even more because there's going to be mud, mud slung on both sides of the table here. It's also my belief that unlike the recall elections that are going on at the state level, this is one incidence that actually calls for it. Alderman Hammon has spoken about it, Alderman Matichek. And uh, part of me believes that the recall is probably the best option, mainly because it will give the entire city the choice and whether or not they want Mayor Bob Ryan to still be in that office. And with that being said, I mean, no, no one has a real number, and I, I hate spending money. I, I'm probably the biggest cheapskate that um, anyone could ever meet. You could ask my wife. And with that being said, it's hard to justify spending any dollar amount on a process that we don't even know is going to go through for a fact. At least we know with the recall election that the people will get to speak. Someone else, hopefully qualified, could run against Mayor Bob Ryan, and then we can let the facts speak for themselves. Like I said, I, I've been on the fence this an entire time, and uh, to be quite honest, I still am. So we'll find out in a few minutes when we get to vote. Thank you, Alderman Carlson. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I as well am on the fence. Um, I, I'm probably uh, uh, not, not quite as cheap as uh, Alderman Carlson, but um, I have a hard time uh, rationalizing spending uh, an unknown amount of money. Uh, I believe in the democratic process as far as having the recall. Um, I have some questions as to um, the validity of, of all the, uh, the charges and, and the investigation. And uh, like I said, I, I, I have difficulty spending that money when we have the ability. Uh, I guess I'm disappointed in, in in one thing, however, though, is, is I, I've gotten uh, some phone calls for and, and some uh, phone calls uh, saying remove the mayor but don't spend any money and then some saying um, don't, don't do anything at all. I guess the one thing I am disappointed in is that, um, <coughs> excuse me, if the general public is this um, gung-ho, shall we say, to recall the mayor, uh, that there isn't any process in the last 22 days started for any recall. Uh, I guess that, that troubles me as to what the actual consensus out there is uh, and the fact that we've had 22 days, uh, no one has done any petition um, for anything, knowing that if this does not go through tonight, that that is the only other option. Um, I, I, like I said, I, I feel a lot more comfortable if that actually had been started by someone and we were uh, getting the general uh, consensus from the public that, um, that there was some problem. So again, I'm on the fence and uh, um, I guess we'll see when it comes to the vote. Thank you, Alderman Raisler. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, haven't spoke too much on this in this uh, on this body because, uh, like many others, I've kind of struggled with this. Um, three weeks ago, basically, the work of the city came somewhat to a halt. I don't think anybody in this body in City Hall would argue that this has not been just a tremendous distraction to the work of the city. Um, and with all due respect, Mr. Mayor, um, you know, I don't particularly appreciate being lectured to from there when we weren't the one that created this mess. Um, you know, with the, if you dig up dirt, then we'll dig up dirt. That's not what this is about. The, the, what this is about is the citizens are angry and they want some answers, they want some results. The question before this is do we spend the money to go forward with that? And that's where I'm torn. My struggle is do we spend the money and does it appear that we're condoning this? When we look at my kids and say, yes, there's a price tag to acceptable and unacceptable behavior. That's my struggle. So this isn't as much of a, do we need the mayor? Do we not need the mayor? It's, are those types of actions acceptable conduct by a public official in the city of Sheboygan? And that's what we're deciding, whether we're gonna go forward and determine that, or whether we're gonna stop now and say, we think he's learned his lesson. We think um, we've taken this to the brink of nuclear. Unfortunately, the statutes, I've gotten some emails from individuals asking, well, how come we just don't suspend him with pay? Statutes don't allow for that. We have two options. We can censure, which happened in this body in 2010, which is essentially a public slap on the wrist, or we can take the nuclear option and remove him. Either way, none of us win. Mayor certainly doesn't win, the city certainly doesn't win, and neither does this body or the taxpayers of the city of Sheboygan. 
So again, this isn't about Bob versus the council. This is whether the actions that he took on that weekend um, should be acceptable from a public official in the city of Sheboygan. If you believe that they shouldn't be, then vote to hire the attorney. If you don't, say no. Thank you, Alderman Hammond, and I apologize if I uh, um, offended you in talking about uh, slinging mud. Um, it's, uh, I was simply responding to another alderman who uh, was stating about different incidents that can come up. Fair enough. Thank you. Thank you. Alderperson Kittleson. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I, I guess um, I, too, have had a lot of calls on this, and people are, are saying, yes, don't spend the money. There are others that are saying, do what you need to do. Um, so those things we need to weigh very carefully. Um, the other thing being said is uh, people have not come forward to do a recall and uh, and that uh, for whatever reason I just feel that there's a silent majority of people out there who elect us as older persons uh, to do a job and they, they have not the time nor the inclination to run for public office we are elected to do a job here uh, and so that's my feeling with that uh, we need to we need to do go forward or whatever we need to do to do the right thing here. Thank you. Thank you, Alderperson Kittleson. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We've heard a lot tonight from a lot of our uh, um, council people here. Um, a lot on this topic, a lot about calls, a lot about the process, how it may or may not play itself out. Um, one thing that I've considered over the last couple weeks is my obligation and our duty here as elected officials. We've received six complaints, two of which have been verified by the city's attorney office to meet the legal standard. Are we to turn those complaints away? Are we to say your complaints don't matter? I think we have an obligation and a duty to look into this process. This is the beginning of the process. This is not the end result. Um, as I've told many people that have asked me about this, again, this is the beginning of the process. There will be a hearing. The mayor has brought up the, uh, about wanting to see his accusers and wanting to learn the facts. That's what this hearing will be about. People will have to come here and give their accounts of what occurred and whether or not that meets the criteria of removal will be the end result of this hearing. Um, again, we've received these complaints and I think we have a duty to look into those complaints. Thank you, Alderman Van Eckert. If I can just comment on complaints, um, the two complaints that were certified to be valid by the city attorney's office was not that they were, that it means they were done in proper form to meet the statute of a complaint, correct? Uh, attorney McLean? Yes, Mayor, that's all I looked at is basically I was looking at form and not substance as far as the, the validity of the complaints or the substance of the complaints. So they were, they were done in the proper format. It doesn't mean the substance meets a complaint. Anybody can file a complaint at any time against any public official. If that complaint is formatted properly, the form is filled out properly to meet the law, does that mean that every complaint will be going to a quasi-judicial hearing by this body? Or does this body look at what is in those complaints and decide that a complaint does or does not, which every alderman is capable of reading and comprehending it, meet the criteria for what the end intentions are of the complaint, which is removal from office? Anybody else could file a complaint because the charges can be true, false, doesn't matter. Is this body going to hear every one of those complaints in a, in a uh, quasi-judicial hearing? And those complaints don't necessarily need to be against myself as a public official. They could be against anybody that is an elected official in the city. So what Attorney McLean did is verified that the complaints were filled out in proper form. It has nothing to do with the substance of the complaint. We're going to need Alderman Matichek. 
Uh, I just wanted to touch base on that too. I think we are doing the process right now, looking at the, the complaints and deciding whether or not they have substance to them to move forward. It, 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 had the mayor been drinking and driving and had a breathalyzer test, there would be an open shut. We would have the facts. We would have someone's name. We would have uh, the ability to make a judgment based on that to move forward. But here, th these are, again, very vague uh, uh, accusations made, made to the, uh, the mayor. And the complaints, uh, to me, do not hold substance. And, and again, uh, not only to me, but to quite a few people out in, in the public. It, it just doesn't seem fiscally prudent right now to move ahead w with these until some actual substance comes forward. Thank you, Alderman Matichek. The board is open. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I call the question. Second. Motion to call the question in a second. <laughs> Under discussion, just on calling the question. All in favor of calling the question, state aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. The question is called. We will go for a vote. Uh, we are taking 1059, correct, sir? 1059. Okay, 1059, uh, which is to hire two attorneys. Uh, no cap. Uh, notify the council at $40,000 and proceed uh, with a quasi judicial hearing. An I vote would be to approve to hire the attorneys. A no vote would be not to. Roll call, please. Carlson. No. Decker. Aye. Hammond. No. Hammond. No. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Matichek. No. Rinfleisch. Aye. Raisler? No. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? No. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. And Boren? Aye. Nine eyes, six no's. Is that a two year, two for this vote? Not on an RC? Hmm? Not on an RC. Okay. Motion carries. Uh, we will now go on to document number 1047. 1047 being by Alderman Rinfleisch authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2011 budget, uh, which will be to appropriate um, The, there is no cap on it, but the, the council will be informed uh, after $40,000 in legal fees. I don't believe there's a cap on this because I don't believe you can. 1047, okay, it's capped at $50,000. Um, the amount is $50,000, so. Um, it would be to transfer $50,000 to pay attorney's fees. I don't know what happens after the 50000 but it's for $50,000. Under discussion. We need a motion. We have a motion. Do we have a motion? We need to suspend. Alderman Rinfleisch. Thank you, Your Honor. I uh, move to suspend the rules. Second. Motion to second to suspend the rules. Is there anybody opposed to the rules being suspended? Is there anybody opposed? Rules are suspended. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. If I may. Uh, it's come up in previous conversation that there is no cap. Uh, I think the resolution is pretty solid. It does say there's a cap at $50,000. Likewise, I think there's much more things that we could be spending $50,000 on out of our general reserve. Uh, but with the uh, motion to proceed in the previous documents, I ask that we uh, pass the resolution. Uh, we'll give notice, though, that if uh, this one, obviously, you need two-thirds votes. On this one, we need 11 votes. If you do not get 11 votes, I will ask to reconsider the previous um, motion and the previous documents and file that one. There seems to be no point if we uh, proceed with the hearing if we can't fund it. Um, so um, for the chair's purposes, um, that will be after this vote. If we do not get 11 votes, I'll make that motion down the road. 
Okay, as Alderman uh, or President Rindfleisch stated, this requires a two-third votes or 11 votes to do the funding. Um, up to $50,000, Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I believe in 1059 that we just passed, uh, it says there's no cap on the on the funds. However, we have to put a number in 1047. You can't you can't leave it blank. So my understanding, maybe you can clear this up, Attorney McLean, is that we're putting the $50,000 in there because we have to put in an amount. Uh, but the 1059 says there's no cap, but we are to be advised if the legal fees or if or when they reach $40,000. So can you clarify that? Uh, yes, I believe so, uh, Alderman Bourne. Uh, I was asked either Thursday afternoon or Friday afternoon by the Finance Department as to what to do with the transfer document that they were directed to prepare by the Committee of the Whole. Uh, it's my opinion that in order to put a transfer document in, you need a definite number to transfer. You can't just transfer an undesignated amount from one account to another. Uh, so the <clears throat> we talked and uh, the $50,000 was the upper number that was discussed at the Committee of the Whole. So it was my suggestion to the Finance uh, Department that transfer $50,000 at this time. If the Council wanted to change that number, could do that tonight. Uh, but I thought that that was a a number that you could put in place if you chose to do that that would uh, get you well on in the process. I, I think it's with the understanding from the, from the committee, the whole uh, committee report that um, there would be, and I, I would assume that the attorneys would be advised also that uh, there would be some mechanism that once you got up to $40,000 there to be an attempt to notify the council, um, and, the, and the council would have to decide what to do from there as to whether to uh, not appropriate any further dollars or to appropriate more or whatever. So I don't know if that answer you look uh, well, puzzled. Uh, well, 10, 1059 says it's uncapped. So I, I guess my question is, if we get up to 50, do we have to take another vote, or do we just proceed? You would need to take another vote. Okay. But in order to spend any money, you need to put it into, you're taking, so the proposal is to take funds out of unreserved fund balance. That, you just cannot take monies out of that account without transferring them into some other appropriate account to spend the money on. Thank you, Alderman Barn. Thank you, Steve. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I guess the thing to keep in mind since this body has just approved the previous document is that just because we authorize the spending of the money does not mean we have to. And as many of you know, obviously, as the chair of the Finance Committee, I'm probably cheaper than Alderman Carlson when it comes to those types of things. Um, so if we're going to move forward, um, I do think we need to do, show, do so slowly, um, you know, not the speed of, but if we're going to hire counsel, um, at least consult with them, determine what the right course of action, if there is a course of action, and, and take action. But I just want to, you know, I guess point out that just because we authorize it doesn't mean we have to spend it. Um, so I guess just to point that out. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Alderman Versi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Actually, to follow up with that, if this passes, if this, this is actually probably directed to Steve, if we don't even use 50000 if we only use half of that, do we have to vote to put that back into a reserve fund, the remainder of that money? What happens to the rain, remainder of the money that we're taking out? Well, if at the end of the year there's a surplus in that account, my understanding is it goes back into the general fund. Alderman Board? Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> and I also want to remind the council that if you approve this $50,000 and we hire an attorney, one of the first steps with the, uh, with the attorney that we hire, the special prosecutor, is going to look over these complaints and see if the complaints have merit that we should go forward. But we're not even going to be able to talk to an attorney to represent or the prosecutor, a special prosecutor, 
to get some advice whether we should even go forward with the complaints based on the reading of the complaints. So uh, in order to even do that, we're going to have to authorize some money to go into this, uh, this legal services fund. So, uh, and, I, and I can speak for myself, uh, I certainly don't relish this process and uh, I'm going to be, be very certain in my own mind after the, a special prosecutor looks at these complaints and the alleged charges that we've got a case. I'm not, in my mind, I'm not going to go forward with a case just for the sake of doing it. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. A um, couple statements here. Number one, there's not an attorney um, who is in business um, that will probably look at this and not take the case. That's why you have attorneys. Um, number two, if we go over $50,000, what happens? So, if we fund this, you know, I think we just, we need to look at what's right and what's wrong here. What's the law and what's not. If in your own mind you believe that the incidents in question come to malfeasance in office, please vote to fund it. If you don't, this is not going to be a pretty process and we all know it. The reason there's not a recall is probably because it's been out there in the papers that this process is going to keep moving forward and that's what's been out there. As I stated before, I'm dedicated to the city, I'm dedicated to my family, I'm dedicated to sobriety, I'm doing everything in my power and I will keep doing it to do this job. I'll do everything in my power to be 100% sober for the rest of my life because I want to. Because my family deserves it and this city deserves it. I don't want to drag this out because it's not going to be a quick process and we all know it and it's not going to be good for the city. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I don't know if the attorney can answer this or, or maybe the finance director. Is there, oops, sorry. Uh, is there any money in uh, any fund right now for outside legal counsel that we would be transferring this in addition to money that's in there already budgeted or not? In council legal services, that account? I don't believe so. Um, I don't know if the finance director's here or not. No. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I agree with uh, Alderman Hammond and Alderman Boren that we do need to proceed slowly with this process, that this process calls for hiring an attorney to look over the allegations, look over the complaints, and decide whether there is merit in those. And I believe that's, you know, we voted to proceed with that. I believe that's what we need to do to now fund that process. If at that time we receive legal advice saying there is not merit in these complaints to meet the legal standard that you yourself say there's not, then at that time that, that would probably end the process. I know it would for me. I have no intentions of going any further in the process if legal counsel says there isn't merit in the process. So I, I don't believe this is a personal matter. I believe this is what's right and what's wrong. And if there is criteria that is met for removal, then that's the process as it plays out. Um, I also have a question for City Attorney McLean. Um, if this plays out and uh, again, a complete hypothetical that this process plays out and there's um, uh, a call for removal and that vote is taken and, and the mayor is removed from office. At that time, with the mayor not being any longer an employee, would the city be able to, or your office be able to represent any further appeals or would we still have to continue with outside counsel and funding outside counsel as you would then be representing our decision in future appeals down the line? Uh, I don't have an an good answer for you off the top of my head, Alderman uh, Van Akron. I'd have to think about that some. I don't know at this point. Okay. Okay. 
We have no further lights. We will take a vote. 1047, appropriating a transfer of $50,000 for outside legal counsel. An I vote would appropriate the money. A no vote will not. Sue? Decker? Aye. Hammond? No. Hammond? Aye. Cott? Aye. I'm sorry. Aye. Thank you. Kittleson? Aye. Matichak? No. Rinfleisch? Aye. I'm sorry. Aye. Raisler? No. Sampson? Aye. That was an aye? Aye, yes. The fan's going really loud up here, so. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? No. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? No. Ten eyes, five no's. It's not two thirds. Motion fails. President Rinfleisch. Hey, Mr. President. Mayor, uh, as promised, I move to uh, reconsider the votes on the uh, document 1059 and ask that the committee file said document. Thank you. Second. Could we have that again? I was. We have a motion and a second to reconsider 1059 and a motion to file. Correct, President Rinfleisch. I think we need to vote on the reconsider first. Right. Um, vote on my recommendation under discussion would be to reconsider it and then file it if we're not going to find it. We have a uh, continue. vote on reconsidering. Uh, reconsidering only under discussion. Alderman Boren, did you want to speak? I had, a, I had a question on the last vote. There's 15 of us here. Is uh, 10 not enough with 15 here? Two thirds of the full. Of the full. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Okay, under discussion on reconsideration, we have a motion in a second of 10.59. Under discussion? There's no discussion on reconsideration. Oh. Uh, Alderman Hammond? No? Okay. Next one. <laughs> Getting ahead Premature? <laughs> yeah. Uh, on reconsideration, 10.59. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. 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 We have two no's. Let's do a roll call. Three no's, maybe. Roll call on reconsidering 10.59. An I vote will reconsider. A no vote will keep it as is. Do you Hughes, can you go over the rules one more time? And you've what got a motion to reconsider 10.59, which you've already taken a vote on. So you're reconsidering that document. An I vote would be to reconsider. A no vote would be to not reconsider. And by not reconsidering, we're filing it, or we're doing? No, by, by not reconsidering, it would hang in limbo. Correct, Attorney McLean? By not reconsidering it, it, it remains That's adopted. You don't have funding to, to carry that out. Uh, a motion to reconsider would be to bring the issue back before the body, and then you vote again as to what you want to do with it. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Raisler. On reconsideration, Alderman Sampson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, so if we, if we vote to not reconsider it, it just sits there and then what happens? And then nothing. So we have an un unfunded. It's just there, but not funded. For any future action on this, or how does that, how does that work? It'll probably get filed with housekeeping at the end of the year, I imagine. <laughs> on reconsideration. We have a roll call on reconsideration. An I vote would be to reconsider the document. A no vote would be to leave no. it out there. Ready? Please. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Koth? No. Kittleson? No. Matichak? Aye. I'm sorry? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? No. Sampson? No. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? No. Belt? No. Boren? No. Carlson? No. Decker? No. Five eyes, ten no's. Motion to reconsider fails. Motion to reconsider fails. Alderman Boren? 
make a motion to reconsider number 1047, please. Second. We have a motion to reconsider 1047. I'm sorry, Alderman Bourne. Who seconded that? Under discussion. I heard a beep, but I don't see any lights. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. If we just uh, voted not to uh, reconsider 1059 and it's still out there, I just want to mention to the council again, by going ahead with this funding gives us, gives us authority to hire the attorneys to get their opinion whether we have a case based on those two complaints. And as I said before, I do not relish going forward with this process. We've got more in thing, important things to do, but I agree with Alderman Van Akron when he said, we've got two complaints that have been approved by the city attorney, and I think we owe it to those constituents to at least uh, bring this before our special prosecutor for his or her's opinion on whether there are substantial charges in here. And uh, so if, uh, if, we've, if we kept this document alive without the funding, it doesn't make any sense. I think we should approve the funding, take the initial steps to hire the attorney, have him look at our complaints, and tell us whether we have a case. And if we don't, I'll be the first one not to go ahead with it because, uh, <coughs> as I said, I don't relish this process. But I think we owe it to the constituents that filed the complaints to at least have our special counsel take a look at it. Thank you. Alderman Hammond. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I guess I would like to make a friendly or make an amendment. Um, Steve, correct me if I'm screwing this up, but uh, I'd like to amend this document to lower the amount that we are authorizing to $10,000. Within $10,000, I think we can hire counsel to give us um, input on whether or not this makes sense to go forward with. If it does after that and this body feels it should, then we can come back and ask for additional dollars. So I would make an amendment. To don't tell me I can't. You can't. Oh. We're still on the reconsider motion. Oh. Your Honor, if I could. Uh, from a Robert's Rules of Order standpoint, uh, a motion to reconsider needs to be uh, made by a member who voted with the prevailing side on the motion. And I, uh, Alderman Bourne, I believe you voted on the, uh, the losing side of that, that motion. So it uh, needs to be made by... So it would have to be made by an alderman that Somebody voted, voted against, voted not to fund the legal counsel. It would have to be made by either Carlson, Haman, Matichek, Raisler, or Vanderweel in order to reconsider. We do the one before that, right then? Pardon me? Did we do the one before that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, we didn't do that properly either. What's that? The, uh, I made the motion to reconsider on 1059. You were on. That was on the winning side. You were on the prevailing side, so that was appropriate. That would be right. Oh, okay. That would be. Okay. That was fine. Yeah. We were fine on 1059. On 1047, I do not see anybody wishing to reconsider. Um, the motion would have to be made by an alderman that voted not to fund. I do not see any of those aldermen. There's a light. Uh, alderman Van Akron. Did you push the button? Okay, Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Your Honor. I know I'm not one of the ones that was listed, but I guess I would implore one of those. Um, to uh, offer the reconsider. We're kind of in, in a, a stalemate at this point. We've, we've approved this motion, but we are looking for the funding of it. And I agree with Alderman Boren that we certainly um, owe it to the two people that put in these complaints to look into this. And, and I would uh, certainly second Alderman uh, Hammond's motion to lower this amount to at least look into this. And if at that time we receive legal counsel that says there is merit to this, we can then ask for more funding if needed at that time. Um, I, I, I too don't want to spend money on this, but we were put in this position and we have an obligation to act on those, on those complaints that we've received. So I would certainly urge one of the, the five to, um, I guess, open the uh, voting for this reconsideration. <coughs> oh.
Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. Could we go any lower than $10,000? <laughs> Not until we reconsider. <laughs> you, get, you get to make a motion. Right? I'll make a motion to reconsider. Second. Who seconded it? Steve, doesn't it have to be a second by the... Who seconded it? We need a second from one of the persons that... Steve? I don't believe the second makes any difference. I'll second it then. He said it doesn't make a difference. We already had a second. Already, oh, 30 seconds. Okay, we have a motion to reconsider under discussion. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Madam City Clerk, is this time is this the time where we could take that friendly amendment to lower the amount, or we no. we've got to wait until after the vote on the reconsideration? We've got to first decide if you're going to reconsider or not. Okay, thank you. Alderman okay. Matichek. Uh, just have a question: How many times are we going to reconsider how much money we're going to put in put into this? We're, this is just a foot in the door, and, and as we keep reviewing and going further and further. Alderman, Alderman, can you move your mic up a little bit? To Thank you. Better? Yeah. Hold no. it. Hold it. There we go. How about that? Uh, this is just a foot in the door. The, how many times are we going to reconsider how much money we're going to put into this thing? And at what point do we stop and then say, tell the taxpayers, oh, I'm sorry, we just spent your $50,000, but now we're going to stop, or, or whatever the amount of money that we put into it. And why would you even want to go down that when we already have looked at the, 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 the claims made against the mayor and they just do not hold substance? Okay, on the reconsideration itself, um, I think the council should be aware you are reconsidering funding $50,000, not $10,000. Just so the council is aware of this, on your reconsideration, it's for $50,000, not $10,000. Alderman Van Akron, once again. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just to clarify, we are reconsidering taking a vote on 1047 yes. and at that time it could be amended correct yes okay so this is just a reopen document 1047 this is a reopen discussion and, and a revolt could be amended to whatever dollar amount it is sought okay thank and you yes is to reopen no is to not reopen uh, a yes vote would be to reconsider the vote yes alderman boren once again no nope. i alderman van akron uh, had my question Alderman Rindfleisch, President Rindfleisch, no. Any other discussion? Okay, we are uh, voting on reconsidering document number 1047 to authorize $50,000 in legal fees. An I vote will be to reconsider. A no vote will be to keep the vote as it was. Roll call, please. Uh, let's see here. Hammond. Aye. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Matichuk. No. Rinfleisch. Aye. Raisler. Aye. Sampson. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. No. Bercy. Aye. Belt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Decker. Aye. And Hammond. No. 12 eyes, 3 no's for the reconsideration. Motion carries. Uh, under discussion on 1047, Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would move um, we approve the resolution um, with an amendment of lowering the amount of $10,000. Second. Excuse me, of doing what? Lowering the amount to 10 grand. To 10 grand, not by 10 grand? No, okay. to 10 grand, yes, two ten thank grand. you. Attorney McLean. Thank you. Alderman Hammond, I believe the correct approach would be to make the motion to put the resolution upon its passage, get a second, and then make the motion to amend. Fair enough. I move that we put the resolution upon its passage. Just trying to speed things up a little second. bit. Second. <laughs> Doesn't sound like a quick process. We have a second. Under discussion, I'm putting the resolution upon its passage. Under discussion, Alderman Hammond. 
Now I'd like to make my amendment that we reduce the amount to ten thousand dollars. Second. Who seconded? I'm sorry, person. Under discussion, uh, we are going to now. We also have another document that says that there is no ceiling. We're going to authorize $10,000 and see what it buys. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think um, Attorney McLean addressed that earlier when he indicated that this document would be overriding that cap and that the $10,000 would be the max that could be spent without coming back to this body for approval. I think this gives us the ability to meet with an attorney. Um, as Alderman Van Akron said, give those um, verified written charges their due course and determine whether or not it makes sense to come back. I think it's a great compromise. Um, at least at this point, to determine uh, the next step. So, thank you, Alderman Hammond. Any further discussion? We need to vote on the amendment first. Okay, we're voting on the amendment. Uh, discussion only on the amendment. Authorizing ten thousand dollars for legal fees. <laughs> on the amendment only. Alderman Raisler. Required vote is what? Pardon? Amending two thirds is 50 or just the majority? Majority. Majority, a majority, majority on amending. Approve the amendment. Alderman Versi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And once again, if this costs us $1,000 for that attorney to come in and say we have no merit, $9,000 goes back in. This doesn't mean it's gone. It's just so everyone's clear on that. Whatever we don't spend goes in. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Versi. Any further discussion on the amendment only? The amendment to authorize $10,000 for legal fees. For discussion, no further discussion. Roll call, please. And Cuth. I vote would be to reduce the amount to $10,000. Sorry. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. I'm sorry? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. And Hammond? Aye. Fifteen ayes. That's on the amendment. Okay, on the amendment, motion carries. And we need a motion as amended. A motion to pass the resolution as the amended. Resolution as amendment. Alderman Hammond, you started the amendment. Would you like to make a motion to pass the resolution as amended? So moved. Second. Motion in a second under discussion. See no discussion. Roll call, please. Hold on. <laughs> Kittleson. Aye. Matichek? No. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? No. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? No. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? No. Hammond? Aye. Koth? Aye. Eleven eyes, four no's. Motion carries. Okay. Do we have anything else dealing with these? Yes, we've got 1034 and 1035. 1034 and 1035. That were referred to the Committee of the Whole. Okay, we have two documents that are referred to the Committee of the Whole. What do you suggest we do with those, Sue? Uh, Alderman Bourne is the one that pulled them forward. Alderman Bourne? Thank you, Mayor Ryan. <coughs> On document number 1034 and 1035, I make, a no, uh, I make a motion to initiate the removal process under Wisconsin Statutes 17.16 utilizing the charges filed by Patrick Jellett in document number 1034 and Deborah Jelensik in document number 1035. Second. Motion and a second under discussion. There's no discussion. Roll call, please. Matichek? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. 
Belt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Koth. Aye. And Kittleson. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Alderman Boren, did you have anything else? No, I didn't. Thank you. Alderman Van Akron, did you have anything else? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Can I request a five-minute recess to allow any interested parties to leave at this time? And but we still have work to do here. I'm sure they want to film the whole thing. I'm sure they do, too. <laughs> I would request a five-minute recess. Uh, let's make that ten minutes. We will convene, reconvene at ten minutes after that. I believe we left off on 1027. These are our reports of officers to 1027 through 1044 to be referred. 1045 resolutions introduced three by Alderman Boring, Boren authorizing entering into amendment number one to agreement for public improvements in Stoneburg Crossing Subdivision City of Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I ask for suspension of the rules on this one, please. Second. second. Motion and a second. Does it, would anybody like uh, explanation of suspension of the rules or is anybody opposed? We have Alderman Van Akron. I would just like an explanation as to this. Uh, <coughs> this came up. Uh, we did not have a public works meeting last Tuesday because we didn't have any documents, but our city engineer, Ryan Sasma, brought this to my attention. And uh, this is a continuing work by, I believe, uh, Warner Real Estate out in that subdivision, and they want to go ahead and pave a road. Uh, perhaps uh, our city engineer could give you a little more information on it. We have to open up the floor for Ryan, Mayor. Um, yes, o we motion do. to open Second. the floor for our city engineer. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ryan, please. Uh, back in back in April of 2010, we had a developers agreement with um, Warner Homes in the city of Sheboygan. The developer's agreement included all the utilities and the construction of the road, but not the paving of the road. So now the developer wants to pave the road. So therefore, we just need to add that, that paving of the road into the original uh, developer's agreement. Steve? Uh, thank you, uh, Your Honor. I think part of the rationale for uh, acting expeditiously on this, too, is that Warner Homes is looking to have some of the homes in the subdivision, I believe, in the parade of homes or something like that, which is coming right. up. And, uh, so I'd like to get his contractor in to pave the streets if he could as soon as possible. Ryan? Yeah, the developer wants to use the same paving contractor that we have now in the city. It's just it's more economical that way instead of bringing in his own person. Alderman Bourne? Thank you, Mayor. I was just going to add, Ryan, you should make clear that the, the cost of this paving is going to be borne by Warner by Warner Homes. It's not city money. Yes, it's the, the developer is paying for the paying, and we're just allowing him to do that by passing this document. Is that correct? That's correct. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Any further questions? Did we have a motion on this yet? Uh, thank we you. We haven't suspended yet. We have to vote on this. We're suspension. still on suspension. Is there anybody opposed to the rules being suspended? Rules are suspended. Motion, thank please. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, make a motion that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. No discussion. Roll call, please. Manichuk? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Koth? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1046 by Alderperson Vanderweel, authorizing the city attorney to engage the services of a special outside legal counsel to represent the Law and Licensing Committee and Common Council with regard to a quasi-judicial hearing regarding the suspension slash revocation of beverage operators license number 9130, Mike Gruno, and authorizing payment for said services. Alderperson Vanderweel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second to suspend under discussion on suspension. Anybody uh, have any questions about suspension or opposed to suspension? There are no questions. Rules are suspended. Please continue. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. second. Motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. There is no discussion. Alderman Hammond? 
Thank Please. you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just out of curiosity, I mean, maybe you can't talk about this, maybe that's why we need the quasi judicial hearing, but why are we hiring special counsel? Was Did something happen? He, um, or after Clinton. he had gotten his license, it is now we found out that um, he probably wouldn't be a very good candidate to have a license because oh. of something that has happened since then. Fair enough. Has he responded at all to, has he picked up his license? No. He hasn't. Fair enough. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Hammond and Alderperson Vanderweel. Any further discussion? There's no discussion. Roll call, please. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Warren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. And Manachek? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1047 is taken care of. 1048 by Alder Persons, Raisler, Kittleson, Decker, and Sampson lifting the hiring freeze in order to hire one police officer in the police department. Alder Person, Race, Alder Person, Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to suspend the rules as well. Second. Motion and a second to suspend the rules. Is there any opposition or any questions about suspending the rules on this? No questions, no opposition. Rules are suspended. Please continue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second to put the re resolution upon its passage. Under discussion, Alderman Versi. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, if I could just get, look, maybe the Chief could come up and kind of clarify, is it in the budget? Where is it coming from? Why we need this higher for right now? Because we discussed it at salaries. Motion open the floor. You don't need to, put department head. Before we did. It's our casual chief. Chief? <laughs> it's a request to fill there's, a vacancy. There's no cameras here, I can say that. So. That was re uh, occurred when Lieutenant Eirich retired. The money was budgeted in the 2011 budget, so the money's there there. Um, failure to do so would could cause a number of impacts, which were spelled out. It would create a need for us to use more overtime. It would could possibly impact the revenue brought in through the COPS grant to place that into jeopardy, um, could impact our ability to continue to cooperate with other departments and work with other departments, and could um, impact revenue that's generated by the officers. Thank you, Chief. Any further questions for the Chief? Thanks, Chief. Uh, under apologies. further discussion, Alderman Hammond, did you have a question? My apologies for the late. You said this is replacing Lieutenant Eirichs? Yes. Is it going to be a lieutenant that we're hiring or a patrol officer? It's a patrol officer and then there would have to be internal promotions. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Alderman Hammond, good with that? Yep, absolutely. Thank you. Okay, any further discussion? There's no further discussion. Roll, roll call, please. Racer? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt. Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichak? <coughs> Aye. And Rinfleisch? Aye. 15. <laughs> Motion carries. 1049 by Alder Persons, Raisler, Kittleson, Decker, and Sampson waiving the residency requirement in order to hire one planning intern, seasonal help, in the City Development Department less than 20 hours per week and approximately for six months. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I again uh, request that we move to suspend the rules. Second. Motion and a second to suspend the rules under discussion. Any opposition or any questions about suspending the rules? Rules are suspended. Please continue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. There's no discussion. Roll call, please. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Percy? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. That's why I have extra pencils. <laughs> and Raisler? Aye. 15 eyes. Motion carries 1050 through 52 to be referred. Reports of Committee 7 by 1053 by Salaries and Grievances who met and discussed the grievances and appeals procedure 
and recommends adopting the City of Sheboygan Grievances and Appeals Procedure, Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt. Under discussion? <coughs> there is no discussion. Roll call, please. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Foran? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Kotz? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichuk? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. And Sampson? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries 1054 by finance recommending accepting and adopting the draft compensation program for non-represented employees. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I move the uh, RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and a second to accept and adopt under discussion. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, I don't know if Mr. Rice is here anymore tonight, but I wanted to thank. Look behind you. Oh. Tom, I wanted to thank you for the work that you've done on this. Uh, this uh, uh, has been in the works, I believe, for uh, a couple of years. And I will also want to thank the uh, Salary and Grievance Committee. Uh, I'm glad this is going to finally come to fruition. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Any further discussion? Alderperson Koss. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I do have a concern with this document. Uh, basically, the concern would be budgeting $280,000 for raises. Is that, I didn't see that, now. Is that this document? Uh, who are you addressing that to? Anyone? Um, yes, can we have a uh, motion to open motion the floor to, to Tom Rice as a contract employee? Motion, second. All in favor say aye. 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 Tom? You may recall that under the Walker Bill, uh, the only thing that can be negotiated with anyone is the um, uh, amount of wage increase going forward. Uh, and that is tied to the CPI. So the 200, I, I don't know where the number 280,000 came from, but that probably represents 2.5%, Correct. which is what we have put in the budget for a potential raise increase for 2012. Um, that, has, that remains to be negotiated with the fire and police unions. We've not made it, you know, it, by adopting the, the uh, uh, non-rep compensation plan, uh, that says that if you've read it, that nobody gets a raise unless they have at least satisfactory performance, and that's at one and a half percent. So. So what you're saying, uh, Tom, is that uh, just because the document passes doesn't mean the raises pass. That's correct. Alderperson Koth. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. So my interpretation of this is we're looking at a, a line item for on the budget at two and a half percent. So that's opening up the door for $280,000 budget? Well, obviously we're, we're, we're funding to the maximum of what the CPI is. You know, depending upon what we would negotiate with the police and fire unions, that certainly can be one different number. And as far as the compensation plan is concerned, um, that's going to be a matter of performance. Thank you, Tom. Uh, any further? You know, we've been operating without a non-rep pay plan for the last four years, I believe. At least three. At least three. Um, somebody had uh, uh, voted to do away with it, um, and a council that I know Alderman Boren and Alderperson Kittleson and myself were on, um, and then uh, there was never a new one created. So we need we need a non-rep pay plan that gives us the guidance for non-rep employees. Uh, raises and such are still voted on. Uh, they don't kick in automatically. Alderman Belt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just have a question, and this is going back to what we discussed last week again. Um, I, I'm not sure how this with the non-reps is going to be. Uh, you know, do they understand what they're going uh, have going to have to do. I mean, have you already gone through the processes with these non-reps already? No. Don't you think we should start in advance? How often are you going to review them? Annually, at the minimum. At the minimum. 
do they know where their starting positions are? Well, the reason I haven't discussed it with anybody is because it hasn't been approved. So I can't discuss a document that hasn't been approved by the council. I, I, the only people I've discussed it with are the department heads and the salary and grievance committee and but, the committee of the whole. But you haven't done any uh, reviews with any of the employees that are non-rep up to this point? Performance reviews? Yeah. Not with that program, no. With any program? Of course, we have a performance review program. So they all know where they're standing today as far as the goals of the city? and their goals, their individual goals? No, because the prior program has a list of characteristics and traits that they're evaluated on, 1 to 10. Don't you think we should start with the, the goals of the city and the, the, to, to lead them on the, on the correct path ahead of us giving them raises, possible raises? Alderman Bolt, the current appraisal form has been in use for probably 10 to 20 years. It does not reflect the goals of the city. All it does is evaluate people on various traits. It's a matter of checking a box. So we don't care about the city's goals? Of course we do. But I think the new, the new form that's attached to your policy more lends itself to reflect the city's goals and objectives because employees' goals and objectives have to gel with what the cities are. That's there, exactly what I'm saying. But there's but no room for goals. That. There's no room for goals and objectives on the current evaluation form. Why not? Why haven't we done that? I didn't design it. So. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you, Alderman Belt. Thank you, Tom. Alderman Hammond. Um, thank you. I just I, I wanted to maybe go back to uh, Alderman Koss for a minute. You know, keep in mind this isn't the the budget portion of of the game, if you will. This is just setting up the parameters for how the non reps will be compensated, and as Tom alluded to, reviewed, so on and so forth. Um, of course, the unions will have their negotiation. Um, so when you look at that budget item for 280, I don't want to say that's worst case scenario, but again, that's all governed by what happened under Act 10, um, not based off this non rep pay plan. So I just want to make sure that that's clear in every mind. You know, the budget and this are kind of separate separate items. So. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. President Rinflesh. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, and I guess just to reiterate something that uh, Mr. Rice had said already, um, I think in the committee of the whole meeting he stated that this is one another way the city perhaps is making history as being one of the mm -hmm. first municipalities that require performance uh, measurements uh, and achieving good standing in order to get that raise. It's not just an automatic across the board. So we are driving um, either the goals of the city, department goals, down to the individual level, correct, uh, really for the first time. And, and really for the, one of the first cities in, in the state that would have done that. Is that correct? Yes, sir. So, again, thank you for that, to bring in some of that private business practices into uh, our municipal government. Thank you, President Rinfleisch. Any further discussion? Thank you, Tom. If there's no further discussion, roll call, please. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? No. Warren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Kaff? No. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. And Van Akron? Aye. 13 ayes, 2 noes. Motion carries. 1055 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operators license application number 9177. Based upon his failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on his application, <coughs> his record of violations related to the license activity, and his failure to cooperate with the committee, Alderperson Vanderweel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and a second to accept and adopt under discussion. Is Miguel Matelvo here? Here. Please continue. Um, we gave him two chances to appear before our committee, and he did not show up for either, so we, um, he did not cooperate with the committee. Thank you, Alderperson Vanderweel. Any further discussion? There's no further discussion. Roll call, please. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Warren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. 
Raisler. Aye. Sampson. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. And Vanderweel. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries 1057 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operators license application number 9181 based upon her criminal record which makes her ineligible to hold the license. It's 1056. Is I'm sorry about it. Excuse me? We're on 1056, not 57. Oh, we're on 1056. Yep. Okay. Well, similar item here. Yeah. By law and licensing, recommending denying taxi cab driver's license application number 8544. Based upon his failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on his application, his record of violations related to the licensed activity, and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderperson Vandewiel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt under discussion. Is Abraham Castile here? He is not here. Please continue. Uh, same situation. We invited him twice to our committee meeting, and he didn't call or show up to either of them. Thank you, Alderperson Vandewiel. <coughs> Any further discussion? No further discussion. Roll call, please. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek. Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Nekrin? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. And Versi? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Okay, that was uh, 50. That was 56. We're on 57. That was 56. <coughs> I was going to say, I thought I read 57, but it was only three quarters of it. Yeah. 1057 by law and licensing, recommending denying beverage operators license application number 9181 based upon her criminal record, which makes her ineligible to hold the license, as well as her failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on her application and her record of violations related to the licensed activity. Alderperson Vanderweel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and a second to accept and adopt under discussion. Is Claudette Barutha here? She is not, Your Honor. Um, same thing, she did not appear before our committee um, when we invited her to two separate occasions. And also because of her criminal record, uh, one of the items on her record makes her ineligible to get a license. Thank you, Alderperson Vanderweel. Any further discussion? There's no further discussion. Roll call, please. Warren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. And Belt? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1058 by Public Protection and Safety, recommending filing general ordinance number 211112 by Alderman Van Akron, Heidemann, Deck and Decker, repealing and recreating sections in the municipal code so as to require the full common council to approve an appeal to the 2,000 foot requirements of the sex offender residency restrictions if such an appeal has been recommended <coughs> for approval by the Public Protection and Safety Committee. Alderman Van Akron. Alderperson Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, I move that the uh, report of committee be accepted and adopted and the ordinance be placed on file. Second. Motion and a second to accept and adopt and place on file. Under discussion? Under discussion, Mayor. Um, after hearing from law enforcement and our county agents, I believe the majority of the committee feels that the process we have in place is uh, working and there's no need to change it at this time. Thank you, Alderperson Kittleson. Thank you. Under further discussion, Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I guess I would request that the council vote down the motion to file and either reconsider this resolution altogether or forward it to um, possibly the committee of the whole. Um, the reason I brought this forward was my concerns with the current process, uh, really two concerns, one being fair and equal representation, that there are parts of the city that aren't represented in, this, um, in our committee that obviously are affected by the decisions we make, as well as the fact that it, it concerns me that three people, which often is the case, it's, it's often a, a three-person majority, um, can overrule or overturn the law that was enacted by this entire body. I, I think we need a little bit more oversight into this issue, and I guess I would request that we vote down the motion to file and either send this to Committee of the Whole or take it up on, on the floor here. Thank you, Alderman Van Akron. Once again, Alderperson Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. And I guess I would just uh, respond to that in that 
when this um, ordinance was passed, the committee was put together and, and uh, we knew that the Public Protection and Safety Committee would be the oversight group for this, uh, these, these issues that come to us. And I think, I, I know that we have the, uh, the law, enf law enforcement is there, we have the county agents there, we have all the information there uh, already. Uh, and to make a sound decision on, uh, on where we're going to place these people. So I do feel that we have a good process in place and we're making uh, sound decisions on, on where to go uh, with these offenders when they come to our committee. Thank you. Thank you, Alderperson Kittleson. Alderman Van Akron once again. Yes, yeah, sorry again, Mr. Mayor. I, something I forgot to mention. My original resolution, the proposal, how that would change the process is that only approvals would come back to the council floor. It would only be held once a month, so not to bog down the business uh, of this council. Um, like I said, my concerns were the fact that the equal representation and the fact that we can overturn a law with, with a three-person vote. Um, I, I did receive a document from the city police department back in June when I first looked into this. And since the creation of this, um, of our sex offender, restriction ordinance back in 2008, um, a total of 116 um, applications for a waiver had been submitted. Of those, 86 were approved. That's an approval rate of about 75 percent, which I found a little bit concerning. I think a little bit more oversight into this matter and into um, these approvals and the waiver of this law I think is needed. Thank you, Alderman Van Akron. Um, as a person that served on uh, public protection and safety for, uh, I think, at least a couple of years uh, as an alderman, uh, and when this ordinance was put in place, um, I can tell you that it works. Number one, um, if we make things more stringent than they are, and especially make the approval process uh, for these people um, as public as putting it in these council chambers on television, uh, we may run into some issues with the state um, as far as uh, we're operating. You know, we're kind of on the fringe of the state law right now with what we're doing being more restrictive than the average community. Um, in my opinion, committee work is to take care of committee work and recommend it to the council. I believe there's good representation on public protection and safety. Um, most of these uh, residency waivers um, are to TLPs, correct? Uh, there are only two TLPs in the city. They're either going to go to one or the other, or they're going to be set loose on the streets. And so I believe that what we're doing is the proper thing. Uh, myself, I don't want to be here every council meeting discussing sex offenders when it can be done at the committee lever level, which is where it belongs. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this might be one where we'll just have to agree to disagree because um, as a representative of 6,200 people on the south side, it would be good to know when something like that is going to happen and when somebody's moving in. And there is precedent because every time we deny somebody from law and licensing, we don't just accept that as done. We let them an opportunity to come and be heard and their license can be either upheld or denied or go back to the committee. So we've, we've done this in the past. I just, uh, you know, I, I like the idea that at least the, the uh, council members from the district these people are going to be moving into have a say. Right now, they don't. And uh, so I, I think it's a good idea. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Alderman Versi? Thank you. Actually, we do. And that's the last time this was brought up and shot down, uh, the Department of Corrections said they would, they would state the address mm -hmm. and notify the alderman that's district is in. Right now, they don't have the addresses. I don't know if they've changed that and started putting the addresses on yet. But okay. I've been in meetings that I've been aware of. You have your say. Yeah, you don't have a vote. You as an alderman have a say to go to that committee, voice your opinion for your constituents. So now that they have the address on, you'll know. So you can go at any time. Okay. Thank you, Alderman Versi. Alderperson Kittleson, one Thank more time. Thank you, Mayor. And just may I uh, uh, reiterate what Alderman Versi has said. The city clerk is putting the address on there. Uh, so aldermen will see what district uh, they're uh, intending to move into. So if aldermen are getting calls that people are concerned about this, they can certainly see 
uh, or let people know uh, at the present time that these people are coming in. And come to the committee then. If you see an address in your district, come to the committee, hear the conversation, uh, and you're more than welcome to have input on that. I, I appreciate it. I welcome it at the committee level. So we do have that process already in place, and I believe that's working as well. Thank you. Thank you, you Alderperson Kittleson. I have no more lights. Any further discussion on this issue? If there is not, uh, roll call, please. And I vote would be to file, to file, file. and set ordinance. Yeah. To ac accept, adopt, and file. In other words, nothing would change. Nothing uh, no would vote change. would right. bring the. It would stay as it is. Then. And I vote it would stay as it is. A no vote it would overturn, correct, right. or change it. Right. Okay. <laughs> Are we yes. good? Oh, we're good. Okay. Carlson. Aye. Aye. Uh, Decker? No. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? No. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Rinfleisch? No. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? Aye. Belt? No. And Boren? No. Nine eyes, six no's. Motion carries. Uh, 1060 to be referred. Ordinance is introduced 10. 1061 lies over. Matters laid over 11. 925 resolution number 491112 by Alderperson Kittleson authorizing the approval of a memorandum of understanding between the City of Sheboygan <coughs> and the U.S. Department of the Interior Bureau of Land Management related to access to Wildwood Islands. I never knew they had a name upstream of Kiwanis Park, which are the little swampy uh, islands that catch all the trees that are drifting down the river. Alderperson Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I move that the resolution be uh, accept, um, put upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second. Under discussion? Under discussion, I believe uh, Chad is here. If you'd like to hear some, sure. if anyone, I'd open the floor up to Chad. We just discovered that we didn't own the islands. <laughs> Bureau of the Interior okay. does. Chad? <laughs> Thank you. This is part of that uh, grant that the co uh, council had approved, I believe, at the last meeting uh, for the engineering department. It was a memorandum of understanding with the DNR for 450000 to go out and hire a consultant. This is actually to do the work on these islands. And as the mayor stated, that the, that's why it's in quotes, the Wildwood Islands, they're the islands upstream of Kiwanis Park, kind of off of uh, South 21st Street. Um, we had intended that those islands were owned by the city and at the first meeting with the DNR, the Bureau of Land Management from the Department of Interior was there and they said that those are unclaimed lands so they automatically take ownership to them. So they own those islands and under this agreement it would allow us to move forward with those habitat restoration projects that are being funded by EPA on land that's owned by the Department of Interior. They also own boat, what we consider boat island out here of right. Camp Marina on, on the river here as well, but there's no work happening there, so. The good news is, is that none of them are developable lands that we can tax, <laughs> so we'll let them own them. <laughs> Thank you, Chad. Any further discussion? There is no further discussion. Roll call, please. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? Aye. Belt? Aye. Warren? Aye. And Carlson? Aye. 15 ayes. Other matters authorized by law 1062, a resolution by Alderpersons Raisler and Versi declaring intent to exercise the police power and levy special assessments for water main installation in Eisner Avenue from 150 feet east of Hubert's Circle to Lakeshore Road. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution, resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second reluctantly to put this resolution upon its passage under discussion. There's no discussion. Roll call, please. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. 
Koss? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichuk? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Grossi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Warren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. And Decker? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1063. An RO by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Jesse Duplichane Sr. requesting a waiver from the sex offender residency restrictions in order to live at 2517 Camelot Boulevard, Department A. Refer. Is referred to public protection and safety. Alderman in the Camelot Boulevard District, please take note. <laughs> Duly noted, sir. Very good. 1064, an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Thomas A. Bowers filing charges against the mayor of the city of Sheboygan will be referred to the Committee of the Whole. Oh, Alderman. Uh, no, that was in the last previous document that I was going to point out. Oh, I'm sorry. I was. It was our district. <laughs> oh, okay. For the sex offender. Oh, would you like to speak on that? No. no he already okay. did. Okay. Very good. <laughs> um, President Rinfleisch, did you have a question on this one? I've got Alderperson Kittleson led up. Was that from last time? I have that one was on from last time. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, Alderman President <coughs> Rinfleisch. No, mine was on the previous document. Alderman okay. Hammond, please. Thank you for your willingness to point that out to me, by the way. <laughs> I did. All right. Um, I would actually like to pull this forward and make a motion to file. Um, I think we've um, got the two, and we don't need to make the motion to file that document. Okay. We have a motion to file. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second under discussion. Alderman Boren. Thanks, Mayor Ryan. Uh, I would agree to file this. Uh, I appreciate Mr. Bowers taking the time, but uh, this is notarized. But if I remember correctly, the ground rules that uh, Attorney McLean had that it had to be more than notarized. It had to be. There had to be a statement on there that the information on the complaint was true to the best of their knowledge. And if I read this quickly, uh, I don't think it's on there. That, would that, would you concur, Attorney McLean? Uh, I think that's an accurate statement, uh, Alderman Bourne. I did not spend any <coughs> substantive time looking at this to uh, see whether it met the uh, sort of procedural hurdles, but I think it's uh, very similar to a prior one that I did look at where there was a notarization, but uh, no acknowledgement that it was made on information of belief or personal knowledge, and uh, uh, just, just in a short look at it, in my opinion, it wouldn't meet the test. Alderman Bourne, answer your question? Yes, thank you. Do we have any further discussion on this? We have a motion to file. Any further discussion? There is none. All eyes. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Looking uh, for other matters authorized by law, Attorney McLean. 65, it's an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2012 and June 30, 2013. That uh, is referred to law and licensing. 1066 is a resolution lifting the hiring freeze in order to hire a manager of human resources in the human resources department. Lies over. 1067 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Renee Cordova requesting a waiver of the sex offender residency restrictions in order to live at 1222 Huron Avenue. 1222 Huron Avenue, please take note, will be referred to public protection and safety. 1067 is a Communication from Joe Stahl, Fire Chief of the Town of Sheboygan Fire Department, stating his concerns if the Sheboygan Fire Department gets cut too deeply. Strategic Fiscal Planning. 1069 is a resolution designated proposed amended boundaries and approving a project plan amendment for Tax Incremental District Number 14, City of Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Will be referred to finance. Looking for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries.